What's up guys, welcome back to Cars, Cost, and Technology. On today's video, we're gonna be reviewing a 2019 Corvette Grand Sport. I feel like today's video is way overdue considering I've been making Corvette content for a while now, but I've yet to make a video specifically about the Grand Sport, nor have I ever driven one. So I'm really excited for today's review and I think it's gonna be a great time. But before we get started, I wanna give a huge special thanks to my friends over at Bradshaw Chevrolet in Greer, South Carolina for hooking me up with this car to review. I've actually been taking my personal Corvette Stingray here for servicing for a while now, always been a great experience. So I highly recommend them to any of you guys who are in the market for a new vehicle or need a new dealership for servicing. If you're in the area, I've got all their contact information listed in the description below, as well as a link to this specific Corvette if you want to get more details on it after the video is over. But with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this review. So to go ahead and get things started, we're going to do a quick comparison of the C7 Corvette Grand Sport to my C7 Corvette Stingray, as well as the C7 Z06s that I've reviewed in the past. Now for those of you that are new to the channel, like I mentioned earlier, this is my 2016 Corvette Stingray. I've owned the car for a little over a year now and I've really enjoyed it. I've made a ton of different videos on this car as well as many more review videos on different cars like this video. So definitely check out the review playlist posted on the channel if you enjoy this video and consider giving it a like and sharing it with any friends who could find the video helpful as well. It really helps the channel out a lot and I would definitely appreciate it. Now back to the 2019 Corvette Grand Sport. I want to focus on the Grand Sport in general rather than just the 2019 model year considering there were no significant changes made for this year as well as the fact that at the time of this recording there could actually be 2017, 18, and 19 uh, model year Grand Sports at your local dealership because of the very short production run of the 2018 model year and the early introduction of the 2019 model year for the release of the ZR1. So it's kind of a unique time right now in the market where all three could be at local dealerships. Luckily there isn't any significant differences between them. But when we look at the Grand Sport in comparison to my Stingray, you can see some immediate changes. And I wanna talk about some of the exterior and what really makes up the differences in appearance here. There's obviously gonna be the wider body. You've got wider tires, uh, front and rear. You've got larger brake rotors. You've got uh, some additional aero pieces like the front splitter, the side rockers, and the rear spoiler, as well as additional cooling ducts to match the body lines of the Z06. Uh, much better looking front grille, again, to match the Z06. Now, a lot of these are not only going to increase the appearance of the car and they look better, but they're also very functional. You know, again, a lot of these pieces that I've mentioned uh, that are shared with the Z06 are for cooling or aerodynamics. You've got the larger tires for better traction. You've got the larger brakes for increased stopping capability. So not only do these add to the appearance of the car and make it look better than say a base model Stingray or even a Z51 Stingray, but they're actually very functional as well. So the cost that you're paying to get that in increased appearance is also going to add some performance benefits to you if you are tracking the car. Now let's talk a little bit about performance and we'll focus on straight line at first. When you look at the, especially on paper, these two cars share the LT1, which is a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. Um, depending on how the Stingray is optioned, you can have 455 horsepower or 460 with the performance exhaust, where the Grand Sport is going to come standard with the performance exhaust and have the 460 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. Um, but these cars are very similar on paper in terms of what their output is. They've got the same transmission options. So in theory, you're going to have the same type of straight line performance. But the Grand Sport does have a slight edge just simply because of the wider tires in the rear. You can definitely feel when driving it that it feels a little more composed, a little more glued to the road, and definitely more confidence inspiring for any pulls. When you look at GM's posted numbers on these two cars for ideal scenarios and what they were tested at, they're actually only a tenth of a second different with the slight advantage going to the Grand Sport. But after driving it, I feel like the Grand Sport would actually have a little more of a advantage in real world scenarios just simply because of, again, how much more composed it is and the additional traction that you're getting with those wider rear tires. And this doesn't even have the optional Z07 package, which comes with even stickier tires. So with those, I feel like the car would definitely be a little more consistent with launches than a Stingray, uh, giving a driver not necessarily a faster car, but just more consistent and more predictable. Now, obviously, straight line performance is not the primary concern or focus with the Corvette Grand Sport. That's going to be more oriented towards the track capability. So with this car, obviously, we talked a little bit about the wider tires, better brakes, uh, additional aerodynamics, better cooling. This car is definitely more refined for track use. And especially when you compare it to a Stingray, you've got many more options here that are going to allow the car to be much more capable. Even when you compare it to a Z51 Stingray, if you were to equip a Stingray with Z51 package and the magnetic ride control suspension, which all the features 
features included in those packages and options come standard on the Grand Sport, you're only approximately $3,000 or so shy of the starting MSRP on a Grand Sport. So at that point, you have to wonder to yourself, if I'm equipping it with these track-focused options, should I probably just go ahead and upgrade and get the uh, you know, wider tires, get the upgraded brakes, upgraded cooling, uh, upgraded aerodynamics, you know, all the additional features that are coming on the Grand Sport versus a Z51 and magnetic ride control equipped Stingray. Obviously, that's just food for thought. Everyone's different. Everyone's scenario is different. You know, again, I mentioned at the beginning of the video how there's 17, 18, and 19 model year Corvettes floating around out there. You very well could come across well-equipped Z06s that are much less than a Grand Sport because of the way they're optioned and the model year and the incentives involved. So I know that there's a lot of uncertainty and kind of some gray area there with buying a new Corvette at the moment, but all things consistent, uh, a Grand Sport is going to be significantly less than a Z06 um, when you're looking at apples to apples. And obviously you're getting great performance on the track. Now, you're not going to get the same 650 horsepower that you get in a Z06, which is what I wanted to talk about when I mentioned the other Z06s I've reviewed. So I've reviewed a completely stock manual Z06 as well as a modified automatic Z06. And I can definitely tell you that those two cars uh, had much more power than the Grand Sport, but for the way I was using them in the review and even how I daily drive my existing Corvette Stingray, it, would, it certainly wouldn't be a deal breaker for me. It was not so much so that I felt bored or underwhelmed by the Grand Sport. It definitely has plenty of power. And just to give you an example, the full potential of the C7 Grand Sport, when the car was initially announced, it was actually mentioned that at GM's Milford Proving Grounds, the C7 Grand Sport was less than a second off the lap time of the C6 ZR1, uh, which is really impressive when you consider the fact that the C6 ZR1 was offered all the way up until 2013 with over $100,000 starting MSRP, almost 200 horsepower more than the C7 Grand Sport, uh, and was a very strong contender itself as far as uh, being equipped to perform really well on a track. So that just shows you what type of innovation they were able to achieve with a much less expensive and much less powerful car. They were able to use aerodynamics, uh, chassis and suspension tuning, as well as tire and brake setup to really push this car to the limit of what it's capable of doing with that level of power. Uh, and definitely at this price point, it's very impressive. So now that we've talked about some of the performance capabilities of the Grand Sport as well as the pricing information, I want to change gears a little bit and discuss some of the cost of ownership involved with the Grand Sport, which is something I enjoy discussing on my reviews because it's a pretty big factor, especially if you're younger and you're getting ready to purchase your first sports car. Not a lot of people realize some of the costs involved with ownership that can make a huge difference in your overall budget. So let's take a look at the tires first. I know I've mentioned the tires on the Grand Sport so many times throughout this review and what an impact it has on the performance and the capabilities of the car. But unfortunately, even though the Grand Sport is a great value and falls into the sort of middle tier, these tires do not fall into a middle tier. These are the most expensive tires on any car that I've reviewed, um, even more so expensive than a Z06 equipped with the Z07 performance package. Uh, these are the same tires that you would find on a Z06, but because they're, I guess, a little more versatile tread pattern, Michelin charges a little bit more for these, not by much, but uh, over, well over $1,700 for a full new set of tires on a Grand Sport. If you were going to be tracking the car a lot, you probably obviously lean towards the uh, Michelin Pilot Cup 2 tires, uh, which are still very, very expensive. They're just slightly less technically, as you can see by a graph here, which I've put together showing all the different cars that I've reviewed and what it costs for a full set of tires. But in case if you were interested in knowing, a Grand Sport will cost you more to replace all four tires than a Dodge Demon, more than a... Uh, Z06 with the Z07 performance package, much more than a Mustang GT350. So again, these are extremely expensive tires, but they're well worth it because Michelin, they equip a lot of different sports cars and supercars. They have some of the best tires in the industry. So I'm not saying they're not worth it, but something to keep in mind before you go uh, do a lot of burnouts or even take the car to the track, you need to understand what it's going to cost to put a new set on there. Also, I don't have the number on it, but brake pads are going to be the same as the Z06s. Uh, so those could get pricey as well, especially with heavy track use or driving the car pretty hard and frequently. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is insurance premiums, which is a pretty big question that comes up whenever you're looking at pricing and purchasing a sports car. Uh, for me, obviously, this is my quote that I received. I enjoy sharing this, but I want to make sure that everyone understands that yours could be completely different depending on your circumstances. I am uh, just turned 26 years old. I have no at-fault accidents or any speeding tickets on my record. So for me and my quote in the area that I live in, it was uh, $660 for six months worth of premium uh, for insurance policies. And that's with 
uh, pretty average coverage. Um, I do choose to get a high deductible, but everything else I would say is pretty standard across the board uh, with the coverage, not skimping, not doing an extremely excessive amount of coverage. So again, make sure that you remember yours could be completely different, but that's a good reference point if you're wondering what a younger guy's uh, insurance could potentially look like on a car like this. And it actually is about the same as what I pay on my Corvette Stingray. So I thought that that was pretty interesting, even though the car is more valuable. Uh, moving on, let's talk a little bit about the fuel economy on the car. Obviously, this is not a very big concern, but the Grand Sport to me still falls in a category that is very likely to be daily driven by some of the potential buyers. So fuel economy may be a concern. Uh, and it's also nice to see that this car does avoid the gas guzzler tax with 15 city and 25 highway or a combined fuel economy of 18 miles per gallon. Definitely going to be on the low side, but I will personally vouch that my Stingray with the LT1 in it is capable of getting better fuel economy than this. To me, that's uh, not quite doing it justice. I think the car is definitely capable of better than that. I don't know about the Grand Sport, considering that it's got a little more rolling resistance with those wider tires and the uh, more aerodynamic pieces are going to create a little more drag on the car. So it's possible that that's accurate for the Grand Sport, but I think with the Stingray, it's definitely capable of a little bit better. Anyway, so those are just a few costs involved with owning a car like this that are going to make a pretty big difference in your budget. So just to wrap things up on this review, guys, and give you a quick summary. Overall, I'm very impressed with the Grand Sport. I think it's a phenomenal value. I think that it offers a great amount of performance and versatility for buyers, whether they're looking for something that's going to look great on the weekends at car shows, out for cruising, or they want to take it out on the track and experience a little more performance of the car. Either way, I don't think that it's going to disappoint. Um, the only complaints that I have on the car, not even really complaints, but just kind of constructive criticism. I do feel like for future generation Grand Sports, it would be nice to see a slight horsepower increase to help solidify that middle ground that the car is supposed to represent so in this example rather than it being 460 and then the jump up to the z06 being 650 maybe somewhere around 500 to 550 would be nice the other thing that stood out to me is something that i've mentioned in the past on my z06 review and that's just that uh, it is a little more difficult to me to see as a daily driver i have mentioned this throughout the video but the tires being so much wider the very sticky compound um, these things pick up rocks like crazy. I can see where that would get a little old as a daily driver. Uh, if you had really good paint protection film installed or something like that, maybe it, you could uh, be at ease about it, but it's definitely uh, an uneasy feeling when you hear all the rocks coming up. Uh, my car does the same thing, but just not near to this extent, being that the tires aren't quite this wide. The wider stance creates some new obstacles for driving around town uh, that, that if you're planning on daily driving the car, you'd want to be aware of and obviously could lean you back more towards a Stingray if it's something that you're gonna be driving on a regular basis. But uh, again, not really anything that are deal breakers for me on the Grand Sport. I'd still heavily consider upgrading to one if I didn't have my sights set on the C8 at the moment. But anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my review of the 2019 Corvette Grand Sport. Definitely let me know down below in the comments if you have any other questions on the car or anything else that you'd like to know about. I'll do my best to answer those for you, but I do really appreciate you watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you did enjoy this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll talk to you next time. Have a great day.